Hello, my name is Ebony and I am from On The Warpath. We're a family of four and we have traveled all the way around Australia and we're still traveling. Now, if you're watching this video, you are probably thinking of traveling as well. You might've just gotten a caravan, might've just got a motor home, a car with a tent, whatever. And you're thinking of doing a small trip, big trip. You might be wanting to do this lifestyle forever. And you're wondering about all of those things that you might need to get for that adventure. Now, if you're anything like me, this can be a little bit overwhelming because there's so much to do and plan before you start a trip like this. Now we're gonna do another video just on all of the things that you might want to plan before you set off on something like this. Okay, so I want to be really clear that this video is all of the things that I might want for the lap of Australia. It is not all of the things that I need. Yes, on Insta, Facebook, YouTube, social media, you see all these people with all the bells and whistles. But when you get out here, the reality is there are so many different setups and they may have nothing with them, heaps of stuff with them. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to have all of these different things. You do not need to have all these things. But I am putting Putting this list together for you of all of the things that have helped us that you may want. So we found what helped us when we started was we made a list of all of the things that we wanted for us and we popped it on the fridge and as we got each one we just ticked it off one at a time until we had everything that we wanted. So we're going to start this video with just the basics and then we're going to end up with those more kind of luxury items at the end. You don't need a pen and paper for this guys. I'm going to chuck all of these into a list. All you need to do is put in the comments section, send me the list and I'll send you that list in an email. Okay, so if you're just going in a car, you probably don't need a bunch of these first things. But if you've picked up a van or a motorhome, that kind of thing, and you think, oh great, I've got it, I can just go, that's not the case. You pick it up and you think that it's got everything, but there are a few things that you do need to get before you can even start using it. First one is a grey water hose. It's grey, it's a hose. You attach it to your van or your motorhome and it brings all of the yucky water out of that and it takes it to wherever you're going to dump it. Drinking water hose. It's a hose. It's normally blue. It attaches from the tap of wherever you're getting the water into your van or your motorhome and then it attaches to wherever it's coming into your van or your motorhome. A tap connection for the end of your hose. There's also a couple of different sizes because the places that you go to sometimes have different size taps. A water filter. So this water filter is outside the van. You attach one hose to it on this side, put the water filter there and then attach the other side of the hose to it here. And it just filters any water that is coming into the van. A power cord. We have two power cords, one that's 20 meters long and one that's 10 meters long. There's another connection that you can get just in case that you're connecting your power from your house, which is 240 volts into your caravan. So we have a bag for our gray water hose, for our drinking water hose and for our power lead. Next we have a screwdriver with a funky extension on it and we use that to help us automatically put our legs down on the van. Now when we get to a place and we're unhitching, we need some wheel chocks. These are just these plastic triangle things that you put either side of your wheel and they're like a fail safe in case the handbrake doesn't work. We have another one as well that has a lock on it. So if we're going free camping or if we want to leave the van somewhere and start exploring, we put this lock on the wheels and it's just a bit of security for the van while we're not there. Leveling ramps. So these are these plastic ramps that you can put underneath the wheels and then you can drive up onto them just in case you're on uneven ground to try and level the van or the motorhome out. We have a plastic thing that we put underneath our jockey wheel and that just gives us a tiny bit more height if we need it on the jockey wheel and it's also a good pad for that jockey wheel to sit in so it doesn't grind into the ground. There are a bunch of things that we got for our car. So we got towing mirrors. You can get ones that just clip on, ones that you actually permanently get attached to your car. We have a UHF radio. So that radio is so that we can talk to other cars out on the road and more importantly, other trucks and vans that are out on the road. If you want your van or your motorhome to be going on any dirt roads or corrugated road, then you'll probably need to let the pressure down on your tires. We have this little thing that we stick into the nozzle on the tires and it deflates the tires. I'll often not even use that and I'll just use my fingernail but we do need a tire pressure reader to know what we've let the tire pressure down to. We also have a tire inflator so that once we're back onto the bitumen, we can inflate the tires back to the tire pressure that they need to be at. We have some max tracks. So these are things that if we get bogged, just the car or the van and the car, we can pop these underneath the wheels and then we can drive up onto those ramps and they get you some traction to get you out of that bog. We also have a shovel that you can pull apart and make smaller and we always carry that in the back of the car. For the car, we also have these little things that we put on the front of the car that are called animal detractors. They're supposed to let off this sound, so things like kangaroos if they come hopping 
something along, hear the sound and turn the other way. Now we've been really lucky touch with that we haven't hit anything. I have no idea whether they're just a gimmick or they actually work, but we won't stuff it. We're going to get them because we really don't want to hit anything. When you actually get to your campsite, you need to set up. You might want to have a ground covering that you can pop down in places where it's like really rocky or muddy. You've got no grass and you're going to be there for a decent amount of time. There are heaps of different ones you can get. I've seen recycled plastic mats. The one that we've got, we really like because the sand goes through it, but it can't come up the other way. I'll write the name of it. I can't even remember what it's called. I'll pop it on the screen for you. To stop the sand getting into the van or the motorhome, you might want to get a muck mat. We absolutely love ours. We've got one on the ground outside and we've also got one just on the step as you come into our van. It stops all of the sand and stuff from coming in. You wipe your feet on it. It's awesome. When you're coming into the van as well, especially if you've got little ones, you might want to get a stool. You can get any kind of stool for this. You can just get a plastic stool. We got a proper camping one and the reason why we like ours so much is because it's really durable and because the legs all extend on it. So if we're on uneven ground we can pop two of the legs out the other two not and it can make it nice and flat for us and our kids to get into the van. We have an electric awning so we've got some awning supports just to give a little bit of stability to that electric awning. They don't come with the awning we had to buy them separately. You're probably going to want some tables. We've got two tables they fold up they're light they're easy to pack away and they've also got extendable legs so we can pop them down if we want the kids to be sitting out there doing their schoolwork on them or we can pop them up if we're sitting out there as well. Comfortable camp chairs. So this is for sitting around the fire and it's also for sitting at those tables. With the chairs, I would say look for comfort, look for something that is compact, easy to fold away and something that is light. We have a privacy screen that gives us a kind of awning look out there. Very rarely do we put it out, but I am still glad that we've got it, especially if we were going to be at places for a couple of weeks. And with that, we also need pegs. So we've got some pegs that we can drill into the ground and they just keep that privacy screen nice and secure. Also for outside, you might want a fire pit. We love our campfires. A lot of places that you go, they will have a place where they've got their own fire pit set up. They might have like a rocky area that you can put a fire in, but there are a lot of places where they don't have that and you do need to supply your own fire pit. So that's a good to have. Still outside, we have a mozzie zapper. I think it's called a thermocell. I'll put the name down the bottom. It's this thing where you turn it on and it emits this vapor and apparently mozzies stay away for 10 meters around you or something. My husband swears by it because he gets smashed by mozzies and he loves it. If you're planning on doing a lot of cooking outside then some kind of barbecue we've got a Weber we really like it but I know that there's a whole bunch of different brands out there you can get. We also have Jaffel irons and that's for us to be able to cook Jaffels over the campfire. Super tasty you can put healthy stuff in it the kids love it and it's also cheap because then you're not using your gas so it's really good to have a Jaffel iron. Okay, I haven't even finished yet and there is so much that I've already gone through. Stick with me, but please remember these are just suggestions. Don't feel like you have to get these things. All right, let's keep going. A bunch of other bits and pieces, okay? We have a first aid kit. We also have a snake bite kit and we take that with us whenever we do a bushwalk. We have some headlamps. Would you believe it? We have three fly swats in the van. To keep inside clean, we also have a broom. Now I love our broom because the handle is actually extendable. So you can have it at an adult size and you can also have it at a kid size. So our youngest Ace, he's responsible for keeping the floor clean and he loves that broom because it's a perfect size for him and it also folds away much easier to carry. A map of Australia. Of course you're gonna need that if you're doing the lap of Australia. So we previously had ours up on the wall over there and I loved having it there. But Danny, my husband, is a painter and so we have his paintings around the van instead, which of course I love more. But if we didn't have that, then we would definitely still have the map up. Some kind of spread on the bed over your doona. So when you do get dirt or dust in the van, and especially with our kids, because we kind of use the bed as our lounge room during the day, we have that cover over the bed and then we can just take it off at night time so that our actual bed spread underneath is nice and clean. Kids UHF radios. These are really handy when the kids are outside, if they're playing games, the different kids can have different UHF radios and then they can play and they can all each hear each other and really they're just for fun. Heaps of squashed stuff. So a laundry basket that squashes, different containers that squash, our kettle squashes, and a bucket that squashes. Just makes it compact and easy to store. This one is quite a funky one. It is a door latch extender. 
So I suppose it depends on how your van or your motorhome is designed, but for us, there's a bit of a design flaw, and that is whenever we have the front door open and latched, we can't completely open our front window. Now that's okay normally, but when I'm cooking at the stove and the window is just there and I need the window to completely be completely open and I need the door to be completely open that's just not going to work so there's this door latch extender which will extend how open the door can be so that I can actually get that front window open if you're living in your van or your motorhome or whatever you're traveling in you're probably going to need to do your washing on the road before we started this trip we got one of those washing lines that you can get out open it out and put all of your clothes on it outside. It is good and I do see a lot of people getting around with them. So if that's what you wanna get, then go ahead and get it. For us, I found it was a bit annoying to get that in and out and it was also quite bulky. So instead we have something called a pegless clothesline. It's made in Australia by a family business in Melbourne. You basically just fold it out into a line and attach it to your awning or trees or whatever around you. You don't need any pegs to use it. You just pull the clothes through the holes in it. I love it folds down to like this big so that's what we have check out what sim card you want to have whether you want to have Telstra Optus or whatever we got caught out with this we started with an Aldi one we use Aldi back at home and it works perfect as soon as you get to the outback Telstra don't let Aldi piggyback off their towers so check that out we found that Telstra and Optus are the two with the best coverage if you're planning on taking a lot of footage of your travels then you might want to get a GoPro and you might want to get a drone as well just be mindful with drones that you can't use them in a lot of places but there are a lot of places that you can use them too we absolutely love our and we're glad we have it a coffee machine we have a coffee machine but we don't have a generator or an inverter or anything like that so we can only use ours when we're actually hooked up to power if you are going to have one then just keep that in mind about what your power supply is going to be or how often you're going to be able to use it a tent is an awesome idea if you have kids with you if we're staying at a place for a few days we'll often get the tent out and the kids love it because they just use that as their own room that they can go and play in stand up paddleboard we didn't have one of these before we started the trip but we went to places and we saw heaps of people using them and we're so glad we got it we love it we use it all the time we got an inflatable one it feels so sturdy it's quite light and it carries like 120 kilos or something on it so we can go out there with the kids on it as well Quite a luxury item, I would say, is a movie projector and a screen. We just brought the movie projector with us that we had at home, and that works fine on the road. And then for a screen, you could use the edge of the caravan, or you can get a portable screen, or you can just put a sheet up. A jerry can that you can carry some extra fuel in. We have one attached to the back of our van, and we have not used it once. There's always been somewhere where we can fill up. In saying that, I still like to have it because it is that peace of mind that if we are running low, you know what, we've still got that on the back just in case. The next lot of things we don't actually have, but we've seen other people with them, we've traveled with other people with them, and we're like, man, that would make life so much easier. So we are going to get these things. So the next one I cannot wait to get. So we've been traveling with some friends for a few months and I have just been like envying them of the, this that they have uh, because they're only like a handful of people that have it. Uh, so basically it's this device that like amplifies their internet coverage so they get ridiculously good upload and download speeds. So this is really good for people like if you're working on the road or you're planning to blog or even if you just want good service to watch all your... Netflix or whatever. So as long as you have one bar of coverage wherever you are, then it amplifies it and makes it ridiculously good. So we've been in places like Cape Peron National Park where there's one bar and I'm here like trying to load something for three hours and our friends are next door and they do it in like five minutes. And occasionally we've said, hey, can we just like log on to your internet to do this? And they said, yes, so that's been really good for us. But we're parting ways with them soon, so we're gonna get one for us. Um, I do believe there is quite a big wait list for this. Um, it's called iLogic 4G Plus out their internet. You can get these bags that are like a rubbish bin and you can attach them to your spare tire. And when you're free camping and there's nowhere to put your rubbish, you just put your rubbish from inside, carry that on the back and then you've got an empty rubbish bin to get inside. Now, while you're traveling or after you've finished your traveling, you may want something to remember the trip by. Now, for those of you who have been following us for a while, you will know that my husband, Danny, is a landscape oil painting artist. And he does all of these amazing paintings. So you see behind us, these are all photos that he has taken while we've been on the trip and he's turned them into these beautiful paintings and we have them all up around. A lot of people say, hey, I like the pictures in your van. Well, they're his oil painting. And so they're awesome because they're photos that we have taken of places that 
we have been and they bring back all of these amazing memories for us. So once you're finished traveling, if you want to get one of them turned into a beautiful painting, great idea for a present too, guys, then just send us a message. Now, if you're going, oh my gosh, that looks really expensive because it's an oil painting, then don't worry. We will work within whatever your budget is. Uh, so just send us a message. We'll work with you to make sure that you get an awesome memory of your trip in the form of an amazing oil painting that Danny will do specially for you. Some kind of generator would be awesome. It would mean that we could free camp for much longer and not have to worry at all about energy. We do have two batteries and we have two solar panels, so we do have heaps of energy, but we would still love to have a generator just to top up every now and then when we need it. Along a similar line, a little inverter would be awesome. It basically converts the 12 volt from the van into 240 volt for the laptop. We have some friends who have this thing called an Outback Ensuite. And if you have a van that already has an Ensuite in it, then this probably isn't for you. It's more for people who have a van with no Ensuite or they have like a rooftop tent or just a car or whatever. So it's basically an ensuite. It's a shower that attaches to whatever you're traveling in and it has instantaneous hot water. Now it also has, I think, a sink in it and heaps of storage. Now, if you're next to a river or something, then you can chuck your hose in there and just have a continuous cycle of hot water. Now, I don't think they even have any available at the moment. I think there's a backlog of orders. Uh, so I'll put it on the list. If you ask for the list, I'll put the um, link to it, but it's called Outback Ensuite collapsible water bag. So this is when we're doing things like the Gib River Road where we might be there for three weeks and we're worried about if we're going to have enough water. You can get all different ones but we've seen friends who have this one that you can fill up and it takes something like 80 litres of water and they just put it in the car on the floor underneath their kids feet. But that's fantastic and you don't have to have it there all the time because it's just collapsible and when you don't have water in it it's not taking up any room. Now if you want to get a list of all of the things that I've mentioned in this video then just whack a comment below saying send me the list and I'll make sure we get that out to you. If you can think of something that would be handy for other people to know, chuck it in the comments below. We've also got a video on our channel that talks about the different kind of costs that you might experience doing a trip like this. So check that one out. It might help. And we're doing videos like this quite often. So you might want to subscribe to the channel and chuck your notifications on just to make sure that you don't miss out on any of those videos that might help you with your planning. Otherwise, I think that's it. Hope it helped. Cheers.